So the new MacBook Pro is finally here. Sort of. The real successor to the current gen MacBook Pro comes out in a couple weeks. But until then, a new MacBook Pro came out. One Apple says will eventually replace the aging MacBook Air. Does the new MacBook Pro earn its name, or is it really just a glorified MacBook Air? I'm Jason with Maslin Tech, and this is the 2016 MacBook Pro. The first thing you'll notice about this computer is the color. Space Gray is now a color option that sits alongside silver. While it's no matte black like on the iPhone, the new color is striking. I think you'll see Space Gray become the new de facto color for Macs before too long. Getting past the color, the design is a mixed bag. Apple giveth and Apple taketh away. Gone is the glowing Apple logo, and gone are all the existing ports MacBooks have had, including MagSafe. Instead, Apple is equipping these new MacBook Pros with Thunderbolt 3 ports. Two on the baseline 13-inch model, and four on every other model that includes Apple's new touch bar. Thunderbolt 3 is a newer interface from Intel. Existing computers like the Razer Blade laptops have come equipped with Thunderbolt 3 ports before, but Apple's got the first mainstream computer to use all Thunderbolt 3 ports. These ports provide crazy fast connections, up to 40 gigabits per second. Thunderbolt 3 uses a USB-C port to connect. The port is the same that you would find on phones like the Google Pixel and the now deceased Galaxy Note 7. Besides fast I.O., these ports also charge the computer, as well as allow it to adapt to monitors and other peripherals. And therein lies the biggest complaint about the new MacBook Pros, dongles. Everyone is moaning about the need of dongles, and believe me, I felt it too, trying to get footage from my SD card to this computer, but this is a temporary issue. Apple has made interface jumps like this before, and they'll do it again in the future. It's the price you pay to be an early adopter of Apple products. This doesn't make the computer any less capable, it just means that the extra weight and space you saved by getting a smaller computer is rendered null by the adapters you have to carry with you. That is, assuming you need all the adapters. In the week I've played with the MacBook Pro, I've needed an adapter to plug in an external hard drive, my SD card, and an external monitor. Yes, it was a pain to have an extra adapter as the middleman, but after I was done with that item, I was more portable than ever before with the MacBook Pro. The suite of wireless technologies Apple has built were made for computers like these. Services like iCloud and AirPlay work beautifully on this computer. If you want to see more in detail, check out my Wireless World series linked below. Give the world of technology a couple of years, and these ports won't be unique. Dongles will become rarer and rarer as more devices adopt USB-C, and in some cases obsolete when products like GoPros support wireless transfer. But that's enough about the ports. Let's continue on with the hardware tour. Opening up the computer presents you with a massive, massive trackpad. It's just as good as Apple's trackpads before, just larger. It's so large that your palms are almost always brushing it, so it's a good thing Apple's palm rejection is top-notch. The keyboard is a second-generation version of Apple's butterfly keys. To me, they feel exactly like the 12-inch MacBook's keys. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but just an adjustment. I've written this whole review on the MacBook Pro's new keyboard, and don't have any real complaints. The keys are very clicky and loud, almost like a minuscule mechanical keyboard. One small note, the individual backlighting of the keys looks really good in space gray in low light. Finally, and probably my favorite new feature of the Mac, is the display. While the resolution is still the same as the previous generation, the extra brightness, color range, and contrast are instantly apparent. Placing this screen next to last year's Retina screen is a huge difference, and compared to the MacBook Airs, it's on a whole different league. The bezels are slim, but not right up to the edge of the display, leaving room for the webcam and returning MacBook Pro logo. Moving on to performance, the 13-inch MacBook Pro does its best to earn its Pro name. The SSD is blazing fast, clocking in at over 2GB read speeds, and the 2GHz Skylake chip holds up admirably in a Geekbench score of over 7300 in my tests. That's not a CPU score to brag about, but it does so while just sipping power. I've been typing this review for about 30 minutes in pages, with the brightness two notches from the top, and I still have 97% battery remaining. Apple's estimates of a 10 hour battery have been modest in my use. If I really want to test that battery, however, gaming will do it. Containing a lower end Iris 540 GPU, the baseline MacBook Pro can handle games from the last console generation decently, but struggles with newer, more demanding titles. Rocket League, at 800p, with most settings on, maintained about 40 FPS, while Borderlands 2 held up very well, getting over 30 FPS on any settings, and over 50 FPS in most situations. In conclusion, the MacBook Pro is more than just a hardware redesign, it's a paradigm shift. Efficiency is the name of the game with this machine. 
Apple is charging $1,500 US dollars for a notebook with the face of a Pro and the guts of an Air. Unlike the name suggests, this isn't the newest MacBook Pro. This is the upscale premium version of the MacBook Air. Last week, Apple charged $1,200 for a MacBook Air with 256 gigabytes of storage and a mediocre 900p display. Now, for $300 more, you get the best-in-class display, horsepower bump, massive trackpad, and faster I.O. while maintaining the same weight and an even smaller form factor. The real MacBook Pro is still on its way. I'll have a full review of it incoming. I have a 15-inch model with AMD's new Radeon 460 card on order, so make sure you hit that subscribe button to see it in action once I get it. That's it for this review. If you want to see what I also think of the 12-inch MacBook, you can check that out here. Once again, I'm Jason with Maslin Tech. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next one.